Okay, hey, it's Ed here, and we're going to talk about Reason Essentials. Reason Essentials is a cut-down version of the full-blown version of Reason, Reason 6, 6.5 to be really accurate, and we'll come on to um, explain what the point 0.5 has added um, in a future uh, tutorial, probably. Uh, Reason Essentials, then, is a cut-down version. It's pretty cheap at the moment. It's £85 in the UK, with the euro being what it is. And for the amount of kit that you get with it, that's pretty exceptional value, in my opinion. I mean, I must admit, I'm, I'm not too au fait with where things are these days. It's a long time since I, 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 I looked at studio racks and mis mixing consoles, but that said... I'm pretty amazed at the amount of kit that you can get in, in Reason 6, or Reason Essentials, even, which is, is the cut-down version. Um, I'm going to do a set of tutorials because there's a lot of stuff out there for Reason, the full-blown Reason 6. There's not a huge amount out there for Reason Essentials, but I think that there's pretty much everything you need in, in Reason Essentials, um, certainly for, for, for most uh, genres of music. Um, even when you get into to really technical uh, music, the there's a lot of good stuff in, in Reason 6, which is it, it's, it's quite nice to play with. Um, but I think that a lot of what you can do with, with that kit in Reason 6, you can probably do by thinking about it a bit, patching stuff together in Reason Essentials. Uh, and we'll come on to have a few tutorials of, say, the alligator, if you wanted the alligator how you would do that in Reason Essentials where the alligator isn't available. Um, so, as I say, that, that's for something for a future tutorial. For now, we've got this set up so that we can see all the three main areas. We would very rarely have it set up like this, but just to show you the three different main areas of Reason Essentials, we have the mixing console up here. Um, if you had several channels, and you can have pretty much unlimited number of channels, you would use this blue rectangle here to slide left and right here to pan across those if, if, if these mixing channels um, were so many in number that they, they went past the end of the screen here. Similarly, this blue rectangle here allows us to move up and down the mixing console and, and see the various elements of that mixing console. Um, so each of these represents a channel. This is the main this area here is is is, is the main so, so so that's the master compressor for example um and then each of these uh channels deals with a single channel uh, so we've got a redrum a subcontractor subtractor rather <laughs> um synthesizer uh, an id8 instrument um a, a loop player a sampler uh, combinator, I'll come on to talk about what those are, uh, mixer, mixer channels, so we can have a mixing channel on the rack, uh, aside from this mixing console here. So this area in the middle here that we've got set up is, is the rack, again we can move around the rack with this blue rectangle here and see what we have. I'll come on to the rack in a lot more detail, but essentially it's, it's pretty much like a, a standard physical studio rack if you've ever used one of those. And it's a bit of an engineer's dream, really, um, because it is very intuitive if you have uh, got used to using a physical rack in the studio. Down here we have a, a sequencer, fairly typical, uh, fairly um, comprehensive sequencer, really, um, but typical of, of most sequencers that you might see in many DAWs available. Um, and... Uh, again, this, this blue rectangle allows you to pan up and down. There's not much in it at the moment to go left and right to, to see, but if, if again, if, if this were a, a full area here, then the, the, the blue rectangle would allow you to pan left and right, and this blue rectangle here up and down. Um, okay, they're the three main areas. Uh, I'm just going to talk a bit about the rack. Uh, quickly then, F5 will allow you to see the mixing console, F6 will focus on the rack, 
F7 will focus on the sequencer and any combination of those is possible. So to get to this screen view here, I've pressed function five, six and seven, the F5, six and seven keys. Uh, I should say I'm working in um, Windows. Many of you may be using a Mac. I don't tend to use, being an engineer, I, um, well, we won't go there, but um, some people prefer Macs. Some people prefer um, other operating systems. Um, it's much of a muchness, really. I, I, I'm afraid that these tutorials are going to be based on the use of, um, if you like, uh, the, um, I think what they used to call IBM compatibles. I don't know what they're called these days, but, uh, but, but not the Macs, which many musicians may use, M many engineers out there may, may I probably said something very controversial there, so I'll just shut up, shall I? Um, uh, anyhow, F5, F6, F7, or any combination of those will get you the view um, that you get. Quickly then, F6 will get us to look at the rack in a bit more detail. So I've just pressed F6, and that allows us to move around the rack here. Incidentally, I, I quite often operate this on multiple screens. Um, and I can have my rack on one screen, um, my mixing console on another screen, for example. Um, so it is very uh, flexible in that respect. Quickly then going through the various items available, we have the master master in section here where we, where we can put in whatever compressors and that will come into it a bit more detail. As a rack, as physical rack, this this looks and feels like a, a physical rack in a studio. Even to the extent that I can press the, the tab key and flip round and and see the back and see what's patched into what. So if I want my sampling inputs that that are picked up by a sampler to come from my audio inputs on channel three of my interface, the audio interface that I'm using. I can I can just patch those in as though I were patching in a physical rack in a studio, and and to me that's very intuitive and and uh, extremely useful uh, way of setting things out, and I re I really like it, and and um, hopefully when when I've explained how it all works, um, that that will kind of be intuitive for most people. Um, there's all kinds of kit available, even in in Reason Essentials. There's pretty much everything you need. We've got a, a drum machine here, um, a standard subtraction-based synthesizer here, which is, a, if you like, a digital uh, simulation of an, an old an analog synthesizer. Um, various instruments available um, in, in the ID8 um, instrument device. Uh, the Dr. Octo Rex is a loop player. Um, and you can do all kinds of amazing things with, with the loops to, to play around with the sounds in those loops. The sampler is a pretty comprehensive sampler. You can, you can set up um, samples and map them to various parts of, of the keyboard and play around to your heart's content, really, um, with, with, with the profiles of the sounds in that sampler. Um, that's the NNXT. Um, so those are the, the main instruments. Moving up here, we've got um, distortion units, reverb units, guitar amps, bass amps, and we can model all kinds of uh, classic amps in there. And then we have sort of mastering uh, units, equalizers, compressors, maximizers, stereo images, and then effects. Delays, choruses, flangers, phaser, we can simulate phasers. This combinator here is, is a, is a um, very useful piece of kit. I can put all kinds of effects like a chorus flanger, a delay, stereo images, compressors, build them up into a combinator um, to get them acting together to get a particular uh, um, function that I'm trying to emulate. Matrix analog pattern sequences, so I can set up sequences that that um, scan through and and play um, notes, um, gates, uh, keys, 
you know, pretty comprehensive pattern sequences. Audio splitters 